the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A very warm welcome indeed to Max's licensing this evening, whether you're joining us physically or online tonight. Uh, a very special welcome to uh, Max's wife Charlotte and four-month-year-old, four-month-year-old four daughter Cynthia, who are watching online. I'm not sure how much Cynthia's watching, but <laughs> and also family and friends, you're very welcome. Um, and a thank you to all of those who've done so much during the interregnum to uh, keep things going here at the churches and, and enabled uh, the ministry to go forward. And I must just mention, I think, Chris, Chris Iden, who, um, who has been an interim priest here and who actually only really said goodbye yesterday. So there's only been an interregnum of 24 hours, <laughs> which is a world record, I think. <laughs> But Chris, your ministry here, I suspect you don't realise quite what an impact you have made here. And I've already spoken to uh, a number of people tonight who've mentioned that. So thank you so much for your willingness and, and your ministry over these past months. We have come together to give thanks for the life of the community in this place and for all who have done God's work in it. To pray for Max now, to begin his ministry here, that he may have joy, courage and hope and for ourselves, that we may be renewed in the work of God's kingdom. Let us therefore wait humbly upon God, giving thanks for all that God has done, and asking forgiveness for those ways in which we have failed each other, our communities, and God. Let us pray that the people of God in all the world may worship in spirit and in truth. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Church may discover again that unity which is your gift. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. That the nations of the earth may seek after the ways that make for peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. That the whole creation groaning in travail may be set free to enjoy the glorious liberty of the children of God. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. To all who with Christ have entered the shadows of death may find fulfilment of life and peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. With all the saints in light, let us offer eternal praise to the Lord made manifest. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray. God our Father, hear our prayer for your faithful people. That each of ministry may be an instrument of your love. Forgive us our sins and assure us of your eternal love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Could the congregation please sit? Mm. Right Reverend Father in God, I present to you the Reverend Max Drinkwater to be licensed to the benefits of Haverhill with Witherspeak. I thank you and all those who with prayer have been involved in the appointment of Max to this benefice, and all who have shared in his formation as a faithful priest and obedient minister of Christ's gospel. Max, do you believe that you are called by God and his church to accept this work? I do. Church wardens, the ministry of the church is shared by all of God's people and their particular gifts. Will you, as officers of the bishop and on behalf of the people of God in this benefice, care for Max and support him in all those duties which he undertakes as your priest? With the help of God, we will. And to the congregation, people of God, will you uphold and encourage Max in his work and ministry? With the help of God, we will. Will you continually pray for Max? With the help of God, we will. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have given your Holy Spirit to the Church to lead us into all truth. Bless, with the Spirit's grace and presence, the people of this benefice of Haverhill and Witherfield. Keep us steadfast in faith and united in love that we may manifest your glory and prepare the way of your kingdom. 
through Jesus Christ, your Son, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We sit now for our reading, which is taken from the Feast of the Exaltation of the Holy Cross, which we celebrate today. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 1, verses 18 to 35. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debate of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since, in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided, through the foolishness of our proclamation, to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs, and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be ever acceptable in your sight, Lord, for you alone are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Well, I don't often look to Clint Eastwood for sermon material, but in one of his more violent films, Unforgiven, there is a dialogue between Clint and his sidekick just after he uh, shot uh, another man. Sidekick is shaken, but he says to reassure himself, he had it coming. He receives no comfort from Clint, who says, we all have it coming. The idea we have it coming rankles with us. We much prefer to think that someone else has it com coming. The people traffickers, the child abusers, the terrorists. But us? No, we're nothing like them. And we are always tempted to prove our goodness by accusing others of wickedness. And by doing so, we create a dubious division between us. The pure, us, the impure, them. And it continues today. So, for instance, you are either pure, anti-racist, on the side of victims and ardently battling against racism, or you are not. You are impure. Or with trans activism, either you are on the side of victims and ardently battling all forms of transphobia, or you are not impure. Or with environmental activism, either you are on the side of the abused planet and its species, or you are not. And so on. And if we're not careful, underneath these secular movements, lurks some good old-fashioned purity codes. Are you pure or not? Christianity argues a bit differently, that we are all sinners. Even if we zealously uphold, as we should, the immorality of racism, of transphobia, and environmental destruction, we are all sinners. Even if we do no discernible outward harm, we are prone to wrongdoing. We gravitate at times to it. Our hearts are not pure. The awful truth is, we share some of the same sort of impulses that result in the wickedness we condemn in others. Now, to the Black Lives Matter campaigner, this might sound evasive and complacent. 
saying that on some level we are all guilty, isn't that just a way of saying that nothing much needs to change? Well, no, actually. A quick glance at history shows that most of the main abolitionists and anti-racism campaigners simultaneously believed racism was a sin and they themselves were sinners. That is not a contradiction because they saw sin as wider than any particular moral evil. They saw slavery and racism as manifestations of human sin that must be opposed, but also saw that the root cause of the problem stubbornly remains. A human being genuinely greedy, proud, tribal, self-serving, and hungry for any supremacy that's available. Maybe Clint's right. We all have it coming. According to Christianity, according to Scripture, according to Jesus, according to Paul, according to the rest, the world needs to be saved. For we are children of wrath. So what do we do about it? Well, the world's answer is, pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Make better choices. Use your willpower. Take a self-help course. Sort yourself out. In short, save yourself. In contrast to this, the Jesuit writer James Martin was a serious young priest, so serious that he was taken aside one day by his spiritual director who said to him, James, there is good news and there is better news. The good news is that there is a saviour and the better news is it's not you. <laughs> but the idea that we're not our own saviour is curiously hard for us to grasp in the 21st century, despite the evidence. I mean, do you ever start the day? I know I do by saying, Lord, today I am going to be truly Christian. And what happens? So often we slip into irritation on the A14, judgmental thoughts about that colleague on the Zoom meeting, or a rush of guys at the bring and share lunch. This is not necessarily autobiographical. <laughs> and we have made self-defeating choices. So often we do things that sabotage are better aspirations and we end up suffering regretful and frustrated and then we do it again yet so often the advice we get from the world is you need to make better choices we appeal to our rational minds to our wills it doesn't work but that fact doesn't seem to bother anyone the advice columns the pep talks self-help books, oh, and the sermons, they keep coming. The reality of the human condition is that for a lot of the time, we can't control ourselves or make good choices, it seems. At least not when it counts. And it is a picture of humanity we wish were untrue. But you only have to look at the events around the cross to see its reality. Take a look on this Holy Cross Day at the events leading up to the cross. Nearly everybody makes poor choices. The most civilized of empires sending the most human of all people to the most inhumane of deaths. The most religious of peoples, the Jewish nation, expelling the Son of God from their midst. And the most disciplined soldiers of that era, mocking Jesus and cruelly torturing him. Never mind the crowds baying for an innocent's blood and most of Jesus' disciples who cut and ran. And the gospel accounts signal in various ways that at least some of them recognise that they are caught up in bad choices and they've not been able to help themselves. And the regret is there. The soldier. Acknowledging Jesus at his moment of death, truly, this was the Son of God. The crowds who had shouted, crucify him, going home, beating their breasts. The women 
who watched these things from afar, bewildered by Jesus' death, but conscious of something momentous and unprecedented here. But given the reality of the human condition of mine and yours, we can begin to see why actually the cross is good news. On the cross, Jesus does not offer sound advice, which we then have to follow. He does not appeal to our better natures. He makes no stirring speeches to inspire us to make good choices. He knows we are stuck. Even if we're in denial, and realising our paralysis and inability to get better, he gives himself for us. Bears our sin, our stunningly selfish bad choices. Good news of Good Friday, the reason we celebrate Holy Cross Day, is that something happens here that is gift for us. Something happens here which we cannot do for ourselves. And strangely, we are made new and released and saved. This is, of course, as Paul points out, foolishness in the eyes of the world. The weakness of a man pinned to a cross is foolishness. The forgiveness of those meriting no such forgiveness is foolishness. The liberation of those who've shown themselves to be turncoats, collaborators, or murderers is foolishness. Foolishness. Why would anybody take this seriously? Why would anyone imagine this is a credible way to be in the world? Why would anybody be inspired to follow Jesus after this? Indeed, the writer Larry Hurtado asks, would there be a Christian at that time, or indeed in the first three centuries? No social benefits, getting employment was more difficult, you might be ostracized by the pagan majority, tortured or even killed by the state along with your family and others. Why on earth be Christian? Not, Hurtado suggests, because of the promise of community or indeed miraculous healings, which he suggests were on offer elsewhere. Rather, he suggests two reasons. First, Christianity offered communion with the God that Jesus showed them. Not the trending gods, who were really rather selfish, unpredictable, and prone to violence, but a compelling God, forgiving, merciful, relating to us with an eternal generosity which bespoke these features lying at the heart of our universe, as seen on the cross. And second, that our sense of personal unworthiness was eclipsed by Jesus' worthiness and his loving generosity towards us and his invitation to us to a wholly different way of being. The bad news is we all have it coming. The good news is we are bled for, we are cherished, we are forgiven, and we are invited to an extraordinary adventure beyond all this by grace. Maps teach this grace. And with the people of this church, these churches, be that grace to others. Enact the victorious grace of Jesus Christ over all the hostile powers and the sinful desires that assail us. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom. And God's weakness is stronger than human strength.
our Lord Jesus Christ, head of the church. I, Mike, acting under the commission of Martin, Lord Bishop of the Church, am here to license you, Max, as priest in charge of the benefice of Haverhill with Witherspoon. Before I do so, it is necessary for the declaration of assent to be made and the oaths of allegiance and canonical obedience to be taken. The Church of England is part of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, worshiping the one true God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It professes the faith uniquely revealed in the Holy Scriptures and set forth in the Catholic creeds, which faith the Church is called upon to proclaim afresh in each generation. Led by the Holy Spirit, it has borne witness to Christian truth in its historic formularies, the 39 Articles of Religion, the Book of Common Prayer, and the ordering of bishops, priests, and deacons. Max, in the declaration you are about to make, will you affirm your loyalty to this inheritance of faith? as your inspiration and guidance under God in bringing the grace and truth of Christ to this generation and making him known to those in your care. I, Maximilian, do so firm and accordingly declare my belief in the faith which is revealed in the Holy Scriptures and set forth in the Catholic Creed and to which the historic formularies of the Church of England bear witness. And in public prayer and administration of the sacraments, I will use only those forms of service which are authorised or allowed by time. I, Maximilian Luke Darrell Drinkwater, do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors according to law. So help me God. I, Maximilian Luke Darrell Drinkwater, do swear by Almighty God that I will pay true and canonical obedience to the Lord Bishop of St Edmundsbury in Ipswich and his successors in all things lawful and honest. So help me, God. Having made these declarations, Max may now receive the cure of souls in this benefice. Let us pray in silence that God will bless his ministry here. Michael, Bishop of Dunwich, in the name and on behalf of Martin, Bishop of St Edmundsbury and Ipswich, to our beloved in Christ, Maximilian Luke Darrell Drinkwater. Greetings. I license and authorise you to serve as priest in charge of the benefice of Haverhill with Withersfield, performing all ecclesiastical duties belonging to that I authorise you publicly to preach and expound the word of God sacraments in and throughout the Diocese of St Edmundsbury and Ipswich in any parish or ecclesiastical district whereof the incumbent or the priest in charge shall have signified assent to your so doing. Saving to the Bishop of St Edmundsbury and Ipswich and his successors their episcopal rights. In testimony whereof the episcopal seal of Martin, Bishop of St Edmundsbury and Ipswich is affixed and I have subscribed the same this 14th day of September in the year of our Lord 2020 and in the sixth year of his consecration. Max, receive this cure of souls which is both mine and yours in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 
God the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side, and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Would the congregation sit and the ministry team stand? <clears throat> so, ministry team. Ah. Multiplication. Wonderful. <laughs> you have been called to minister together here. Will you do so with faith and joy, so that the kingdom of God may be made known? By the grace of God, we will. May the Lord give you wisdom, courage, strength, and love to do his will. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Please sit. Mark, as I place you in this stall, accept with joy your new commission to preach the living word of God, to administer the sacraments of eternal life, and to guard and strengthen the flock that has been committed to your charge. May God keep you in his care. May Christ empower you with his love, and may the Holy Spirit lead you in the ways of truth and peace, this night and forevermore. Let us pray with confidence in the words that our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth and earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Would you stand? People of this benefice, I present to you your new priest in charge, now duly licensed and installed, and I invite you to greet him in the name of Christ. I commend him to your love and to your prayers. We welcome you. May the Lord richly bless you and make you a blessing among us. salvation of the world gives to his people many gifts and many ministries. To the advancement of his glory, stir up in you the gifts of his grace and sustain each one of you in your own ministry. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in the power of Christ. We, we have the gospel to proclaim. Go in the peace of Christ. 
Thanks be to God.